I know you're so nice and you have the biggest heart of gold, but me personally, I'm getting real sick and tired of you putting everybody before yourself. So, I'm about to spill the tea on why going from people pleaser to bad bitch will change your life. Trust me, it's more fun on this side. As always, here are the video chapters. Don't forget that my podcast, my Instagram, and my TikTok are all linked below in the description, as well as my second YouTube channel where I show you guys a BTS to my life, my daily routines, how I stay productive, and all that good stuff. And just a quick note, this video has kindly been sponsored by Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one website platform for entrepreneurs to stand out online and succeed. Whether you're just starting out or managing a brand, Squarespace makes it super easy to create a beautiful website, engage your audience, and sell anything from products to content to time, all in one place, on your own terms. Chapter one, mindset shifts to go from people pleaser to bad bitch. First of all, let's get the definition right because everybody loves to think that being called a bitch is a derogatory term when really it means you're doing everything right, girl. The definition of a bitch, according to Wikipedia, is a term that's usually applied to a woman or a girl. It means someone who is belligerent, unreasonable, malicious, controlling, aggressive, or dominant. Being a bitch is not about being rude or spreading negativity. That is not what I'm about to advise you to do in this video. But everybody thinks that being a bitch is a bad thing because you're malicious and you're spreading negativity but when the same word is applied to a man it's the complete opposite how can the exact same word have two different meanings it literally makes no sense because when a man is dominant he's just being a leader when a man is aggressive it's just part of his nature and when a man is unreasonable he's just being headstrong F that Knowing that, we can assume that when people call you a bitch, it just means that you're not living up to the kind of woman they think you should be, and therefore you're unpleasant. When they say you're unreasonable, it's because you know how to set boundaries, and they feel uncomfortable because now they can't manipulate you to get what they want out of you. They say that you're too dominant, like it doesn't just mean that you have power and influence. They say that you're controlling as if it's an insult, like it doesn't just mean that you have the intelligence and the authority to take the reins on your own life so that you can prioritize yourself before falling to your knees to serve everybody else. So, in conclusion, being a bitch means we're independent. We value our individuality. We know how to set boundaries. We have self-respect and we have a ton of confidence. Okay, you understand what being a bitch means now, right? And I bet you want to be one. So, class is in session. Steps to being a bitch. Number one, energy is everything. I don't care who I have to unfollow, who I have to stop entertaining, cut off, stop seeing, which friendship I have to end if it means that I can value my peace first and foremost. The people pleaser, first of all, is more concerned with harmony in her toxic friendship group, in her toxic family circle, that she's okay with suffering in the meantime. And even if she does muster up the courage to let go of those damaging relationships, then she's like, but how do I let everyone down gently? And how do I make sure that I don't hurt anybody else's feelings? Are they thinking that about you? Your average everyday nice girl slash people pleaser doesn't think too deeply about the effect that her circle has on her. As long as she has people in her life and everybody likes her, she's happy. The bitch doesn't care. She's good on her own. A whole group of people could approach the bitch begging for friendship and she's not gonna accept until she properly evaluates what effect that energy has on her. You could be the nicest person in the world, but the bitch is not about to let some low vibrational energy energy seep into her life. She's on her growth journey. She's not just about to accept company just for the sake of it. This leads us on to step number two. I don't need you to like me because I like me. The nice people pleaser girl will be the one cancelling her own plans, skipping out on her alone time, filling up her schedule so that she could meet everybody else's needs. The bitch is the one who will literally say no just because she wants to lay in bed and that is completely okay. Why? Because she's not out here living and committing every single action to gaining acceptance from other people. If you're not gonna like me because I said no to you, thank God. Thank God, thank you for showing me your true colors because the real ones are gonna stick with you no matter what. You will also not catch the bitch texting her friends before they go out for dinner or a night out asking what is everyone gonna wear so that she can fit in, so that she doesn't overdress or underdress. She doesn't care. Judge her all you want. As long as she's feeling herself, that is her number one priority. And that same principle gets carried out in every single aspect of her life. The easiest way to implement this is from now on, every single decision you make throughout your day, you ask yourself, is this gonna make me feel good about myself. 
Am I going to be proud of myself if I do this? Does this make me happy that I'm doing this? Instead of, what if they think this? What if I get judged? What will they say? What if I'm overdressed? What if they're disappointed in me? No. Step three, unbothered A. F. The bitch has mastered the law of detachment. She wants certain relationships and friendships, but she doesn't need anyone. She doesn't need to control anything. So when she's in a relationship or she's dating a guy, she's not trying to make him act right. She sits back, she observes, and if you're not living up to her standards, bye bye she lives like this because she's detached. She knows that all good things that she is deserving of will come to her with ease. Whereas the nice girl people pleaser constantly lives in this place of inferiority, insecurity, and fear. She feels like she has to prove herself to everybody else always, but the bitch is so confident and secure in herself and what she thinks of herself that why does she need to prove anything to anyone? The bitch is also non-reactive. Like, Oh, you're talking about me? Okay, and? Because her mindset is, why the hell should I take the time out of my day to try and think of a comeback to then get a mad reaction out of you? In fact, me sitting here in silence, letting you make a fool of yourself while you're literally beefing with yourself trying to get a reaction out of me, which is never gonna work, is comeback enough. Step four, your time comes first. It's not about being selfish. It's about prioritizing your self-care and your mental health before you run around to fill other people's cups first. Like that's not very self-love of you. And it links back to what I said before, you don't need an excuse to say no because you don't want to do something. The bitch is all about living on her own terms. What is gonna make her happy? What is gonna fill her own cup? Because she's not a mean person, guys. Like she also knows once her cup is filled, then she could be more generous with giving her energy out to the people that deserve it, to the people that she loves and cherishes. The nice girl, yeah, her battery is running on 10%. Her cup is never full. Hell, it's not even half full because she's always out here trying to do everything for everyone else. And do you know where that leads you? You're gonna be doing that for years and years and years and eventually you're just gonna get to a place of resentment because you never took care of yourself first. And eventually you'll realize when you're so nice and you're giving out everything to everyone, eventually you realize, wait a second, no one's giving this back to me. Because when you're so easy and you're so accessible, people walk all over you. They don't need to give you anything back. They don't need to reciprocate your love and effort. So really it's actually just a lose-lose situation for the nice girl. Step five, attitude always, okay? This always comes first. It's not about things. People assume that money, style, success, status, is what's gonna make you feel like a baddie. But no, the bitch knows it's all in her head because everyone else in your life, stranger or not, is going to adopt the same attitude you have towards yourself, okay? Whatever you think about yourself, people are gonna reflect that idea and treat you in that same way. So when you're a people pleaser and you think you need to do X, Y, Z actions to gain people's affections, they are also going to adopt the same mentality that you are not worthy of love and friendship just as you are without having to do anything to earn their respect. The bitch has her attitude on lock. She struts through the streets. She knows she's the shit and everyone else believes it. Take dating, for example. When the bitch is getting ready for her first date, she'll dress up if she wants to for herself if it's an outfit that makes her feel good. She's not caring about what makeup look is gonna make the guy like her more. She's not caring about how she should act on the date to impress the guy. She's gonna act as she bloody well wants to. She doesn't need the correct outfit or the correct personality to make this guy fall for her. She's gonna be herself no matter what because she knows that's good enough. The people pleaser, when she's getting ready for her first date, she is going through outfit after outfit, wondering what's gonna make the guy choose her. On the date, in her head, she's thinking, okay, so should I go 50-50? Should I like cover the whole bill because then maybe he'll like me more and ask me for a second date? Girl. And lastly for this chapter, let's talk a little bit about haters because the nice girl is gonna get so triggered about what other people have to say about her and she's gonna change all of her actions, all of the stuff she posts online to mold it for their acceptance you will never catch the bitch doing that. And this is because the bitch knows about the psychology of a hater. Now, we already know all haters are insecure and every single person a hater will come across, they will instantly compare themselves to to see where they rank in comparison because they have no sense of self or confidence. We already know that. So when someone walks into a room who has one or more desirable resources, the hater will immediately get triggered. And by resources, I mean physical attractiveness, social attractiveness, um, confidence, a good outfit, your style. Um, even if just your energy is full of love and light, they are gonna get so triggered. 
And because you have a resource that they don't have, they instantly think that you are better than them. Even if you don't believe that, even if you haven't said anything, you could be nothing but nice to them, but now they feel the need to compete with you because you're in higher standing in the hierarchy in their head. They think you're better than them, so they're putting you on a pedestal above them. They don't realize they're doing this, so they're very confused, and all of a sudden they turn that into, you think you're all that and she needs to be humbled and she's full of herself. You haven't done any of that, okay? It's all of their own insecurities projecting onto you because they've made you into this big shiny prize in their head because they know they can't come close to you because their self-image is so skewed and so negative. So because you're above them in this imaginary hierarchy of people in their head and they now think you're full of yourself, they need to humble you. And this is where people will start saying things about you and they'll nitpick certain flaws. They will hyperfixate on anything they might deem unattractive okay so they'll fixate on your outfit or the fact that your hair doesn't look good or your family or your friends who you hang around with how you spend your time your nose your lips the color of your skin and they'll keep talking about that one thing not because you're unattractive not because that one feature stands out and is ugly and horrible because they need to do anything to distract themselves and potentially other people from your beauty they need to talk you down so you're no longer above them and then in their head they now feel like you guys are on the same level the bitch knows this she knows she's attractive she owns it she knows she's dressed amazing she knows she radiates this amazing positive aura everywhere she goes and she knows it enough to know that other people are gonna be jealous of her the people please a nice girl isn't even consciously aware of all of the amazing potential and great qualities she has she takes it personally because she values how everyone sees and perceives her she she needs everyone to like her. You can say whatever you want about the bitch and she's not about to change her behavior or actions. As long as it's serving her and she likes what she's doing, that is that. Chapter two, lifestyle and habits. How does a bitch live differently to a nice girl? Step one, she sticks to her weekly schedule. Think of it this way. When you take the time every Sunday, for example, to plan out your week in advance, you then know what your priorities are. In fact, all of the tasks that you've scheduled for the week, you have thought through beforehand and you know each of those tasks are micro steps to get you to your bigger goal in the future so that you can create your dream life. And as a result of doing that every single week, you know you are about to be living your best life. You are honoring yourself, your needs and your dreams and you are taking care of achieving what you've always wanted to. Knowing that your week is planned out like this, you know, you've got work, you've got school and then all of your other spare time is committed to doing the things that are gonna get you what you want in the future, you are not gonna have any spare time to tend to meaningless tasks like waiting for a guy to text you back or doing favors for everyone or worrying about what people are thinking about you or worrying about what impression that you made yesterday. The bitch is booked and busy with whatever suits her. It could be something as small as her gym routine. It could be that every single Sunday, the whole day is just committed to rest. That's it. And so she can't do anything else on that day. No plans, no, I'm not gonna be there. I need to rest. Two, the bad bitch lives in a way where she is always reassured. She has no fear of being perceived because she knows exactly who she is. She makes it a habit to regularly work on her self-image and her self-esteem. This doesn't mean changing everything about herself, which is what the people pleaser would do because she wants to fit in with society. So she'll dye her hair, change her wardrobe, act in a better way. No, the bad bitch is focused more on how she feels about herself, her insecurities, working back from them, accepting herself just as she is. She'll journal every night. She'll go to therapy to work through her traumas, her insecurities and raise her self-love. Because listen, I get hate comments all the time. And one thing I get a lot is comments on my body and how unfettering it is. I can't tell you the amount of times that people have said that I'm flat because I don't have enough curves. I'm too skinny. Do I even eat? People will say that I'm built like an ironing board. I'm built like a door. Someone the other day commented on my video saying that I am built like a mother effing grasshopper. And you know what? So be it. You know why? Because I actually really like my body type. Even though it's not deemed as the socially acceptable beauty standard for women, that they have to have an hourglass figure and they have to have curves and they can't be too slim. Do I give an F? You gotta be your own validation, okay? So I speak that daily. I look in the mirror daily and I'm like, you look so good. The body is giving. Did my younger self used to think that these would get bigger and that that down there would get bigger? 100%. And was she super insecure that other girls were growing into their assets faster in school and I never got them? 100%. I have the same body now as I did then 
and yet now I love it because I decided to love it. That's the thing guys, you can't wait until the day that you're more beautiful or you're more confident. You have to create that confidence right now. The people please a nice girl will start changing her wardrobe to try to hide the things that she lacks or try to make her body look slimmer than it is or curvier than it is. A baddie just really doesn't care what other people have to say or judge her as because what business do you have making an opinion on me? Like, focus on yourself. Three, she embraces solitude. The bad bitch will go out, she will shop alone if she needs to, she will go to the cinema alone if she needs to, she will go to a mother effing concert alone if she needs to. I did that, by the way, guys. I went to go see Kalani by myself, best experience ever. Do you know why? Because she's not out here begging people to come with her to certain things. You know what the biggest mistake I made when I was younger? When I was a teenager and I was the nice people pleaser girl, that used to be me. I had this mindset where I thought I need to make more friends because then what am I going to do on the weekends and how am I going to have people to do things with and so I just need to be nice to everyone so then I have a bigger circle and then I can like live the life I want. And the power of solo dating is not only does it increase your confidence but it sends out the most powerful high vibrations and the best message to the universe which is I'm okay on my own. I'm not desperate and I'm not chasing because we already know when you have that attachment to an outcome when you're trying to chase something because you think you need it the universe pushes it away from you because you don't actually believe you're gonna get it and that's the thing with the nice girl people pleaser she feels so inferior and she would never want to be alone so she attaches her worth to other people and that's why she never gets the treatment that she deserves or she'll just attract people that take advantage of her when the bad bitch sits alone having dinner in a restaurant She's sending this message out that I'm good and I don't, I'm not desperate for anything because I'm good on my own. And as a result of that, yes, it might take some time, but the right people have, who value her for her and are going to align with where she is at mentally and in her growth journey are going to come. The biggest mistake you can make is trying to be normal and trying to control the perception that other people have of you so then it's easier for you to make friends. Because while people might flock to you and be your friend, are they really your friend? Or are they friends with the mask that you're showing them? The more that you embrace your quirkiness and your weirdness and how unique you are, sure, maybe not everyone will accept you. Maybe they'll judge you. But eventually, when you do get those friends, then you'll know they like you for you. Step number four, the bad bitch is a classy confronter. Bad bitches, we do not get aggressive and we do not argue. Although everybody likes to assume that about us, uh-uh. We just know how to set our boundaries and to not take any shit. But that does not mean we need to be making fools of ourselves and screaming and arguing. No, because why? We protect our energy. And we are not about to give out our energy and our power to just about anyone for the sake of a petty argument. Like, what does that actually get us? Nothing. So when someone is doing you dirty and you need to tell them what's up, first step, maintain eye contact. Second step, completely calm, okay? This person might mess you around and you might be furious on the inside, but you cannot let them show that because the quickest way to lose an argument is to be overly emotional. This also links into what the nice girl people pleaser would do. She would get overly emotional. She might be sad and cry. She might get angry and shout. And that's because she's too attached to the situation. Because a bad bitch is, is detached, she knows no matter how this thing is about to go, it doesn't matter because I'm going to be fine either way. And that's why we stay calm and collected. Then, when the confrontation is happening, when they're saying their side of the story, whatever, you know, you don't disagree with, all you're going to say is, no, that doesn't suit me. I don't appreciate that. I would like if you didn't say that or treat me like that again. And guess what? That is it. You do not need to give them a billion reasons as to why you're worth it or why they should listen or why you were right. No. If they can't take no as an answer, they're not worth speaking to in the first place. My life changed when I started practicing to live like this. I'm not gonna lie guys, I used to be such a crier in confrontations and arguments, like I could not deal. I'm so emotional and sensitive. And now someone could literally be screaming at me right here and I'm like, okay i'm at a point in my life now where i don't care if i have to be the villain in your story because i know i didn't do anything wrong i didn't do anything to d disappoint myself i didn't do anything but i know that i'm guilty and i hurt another human being no if you need to think that because that helps you sleep at night go ahead it's not going to affect me or my karma the next way a bad bitch lives her life is that she focuses on her goals and her mission once she discovers her purpose and her passion 
She's not gonna care about what anybody else has to say. Like her mind cannot drift off to these low vibrational places of always putting others before yourself when you know there is something bigger, greater at stake. Like you are worth so much more. You have so much potential to achieve such great things. So every single day she factors that in to her routine. You will never catch a bad bitch who is just sitting around scrolling on TikTok all day thinking about what she wants to do but not doing it, okay? Dreams don't work unless you do. So she will definitely have a side hustle of some sort. She might have a business. Maybe her purpose is to serve others. Maybe she volunteers a lot. Maybe she has a charity. Maybe she's a content creator. Whatever it is, she commits so much time to it and all of the external noise kind of just fades out. If you don't have this in your life already, then I highly recommend you guys check out Squarespace because on that platform, you can build an online store. You can sell merchandise. You can use it for your content creation. You can sell courses. Schedule Schedule appointments if you wanted to do coaching, for example. And just so much more all on this one platform. Squarespace makes it so much easier for beginners to succeed with Fluid Engine, which is a web design system from Squarespace, which makes it easier than ever to make the best in class website template. Okay, you don't need any design experience. You don't need to have any practice because your first product that you put out, Squarespace is gonna make sure that it's the best thing you could have ever created. Fluid Engine is built in and ready to go on any Squarespace site. You can use your mobile or you can use your desktop to use the drag and drop tools to basically customize every single design feature on your website. So really, what excuse do you have to not be having a side hustle when it's made this easy? Squarespace is the easiest platform to use to gain an additional stream of revenue and develop your career no matter what age you are. I'm actually currently in the process of setting up my own merch store because I want to grow my skill set and explore my creativity with this new challenge. I've got so much going on, but I still want to continuously push myself outside of my comfort zone because that's what helps us grow into the best versions of ourselves and fulfill our potential. Using Squarespace to set this up blew my mind because I don't have to carry any of the inventory. All of it will be handled for me. I can check out all of the analytical features to make sure that I'm making the best business decisions and that way I'm not slowing myself down by making the typical business errors that most beginners would. And I literally got the most perfect website in minutes because of the detailed templates that Squarespace offers you. So if you want to take control of your reality and forget what all of the haters have to say, then I recommend you head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch your website, then you can click the link in my description to save 10% off of your first purchase of a website or a domain. And to end this chapter, I gotta bring in my favorite girls, Lola and Athena, to really illustrate the difference between a bad bitch lifestyle and a people pleaser lifestyle. Lola is a people pleaser. She hasn't developed her confidence very much, so she really relies on other people's opinions of her and that influences her actions every single day. Lola has big dreams and she does wanna succeed but she's often held back because she thinks, you know, if I post that video, it's gonna be annoying or cringy or what are people gonna say about me? So she holds herself back. When Lola goes shopping with her friends to buy new clothes, she often sees things that she thinks looks amazing or she'll see other women walking in the street and she'll admire their style and confidence. But then her automatic thought is, I could never pull that off though. You know, she sticks to what's safe so that people won't judge her and it will be easier for her to just seem normal and fit in. Lola is also very easily influenced by what everybody else is doing with their lives. So if her friendship group is partying every single weekend, doesn't really care about what they eat, doesn't bother going to the gym or studying extra hard, she starts being influenced more into that lifestyle because she doesn't want to seem like a try hard. When Lola has a crush on a guy and she's texting him, she's always asking her friends, guys, what do I reply? I have no idea what to say because she's always thinking about what she can do to skew the perception that this guy has of her so that he'll like her and then she can finally get a boyfriend on the other hand we have Athena when Athena dates she gives no f's what impression she's giving off either you like her or you don't why would Athena take the time out of her day to try and impress a man a man, she has so many other things to do. She's setting up her website, she's starting her side hustle, she's going to a Pilates class. She's doing everything she can to become the woman of her dreams. So she's gonna reply the first thing she thought of and if you're gonna judge her on that, bye, you're just not the person for her. She doesn't need to control what other people think of her. The right people are gonna be attracted to her no matter what. Athena also wears whatever the hell she wants. She'll go shopping with her friends and they might even say, are you sure you wanna buy that? I don't know how that's gonna look. She doesn't care. Your style might not be my style and that's okay, but I have a vision for this piece. So hell yeah, I'm gonna wear it. And whether you like it or not, I know it's gonna make me feel confident when I'm strutting through the street. And really, that's all that matters. 
Hell, I will turn up to the grocery store in a fur coat, sunglasses, and high heeled boots, and no one can tell me nothing. And just like Lola, Athena has huge dreams for her life. She wants to work in the fashion industry, but she also wants to be a content creator. And while it can be very overwhelming, every single time she thinks of those projects, she's more concerned about how she's gonna fit these tasks into her schedule, rather than what everybody in her life is gonna have to say about it. And finally, chapter number three, the dating chapter, probably my favorite. I think a lot of girls struggle with going from nice girl to bad bitch in dating because I used to be there myself. And making the transition is so scary because you think you're gonna scare men away from being super intimidating. And what if you never find a boyfriend? Girl. It becomes 10 times easier to make men obsessed with you when you live this way. And the funniest part is they become obsessed with you when you actually stop caring about making them obsessed with you. It's hilarious. Step number one, the bitch thinks, I am not your experiment to play with. I am the dream girl. That is exactly the bitch's mindset and it's reflected in how she views the first date. The bitch doesn't care if you ask her to coffee or a walk. I promise you, she's simply not going to show up. Like it or not, the first date a guy plans for you is a direct reflection of how he feels about you and how much effort he is going to place into his relationship with you. Because let's look at the facts here. Do you really think a guy would mess around or just play it casual with his dream girl? No. You really think if he came across his absolute dream girl, exactly his type, he would do anything to be with her, you think he's going to waste that chance by taking her for a coffee? No. Is he gonna do that for a girl that he's just trying to feel out with the several other girls he's dating at the same time? A hundred percent, because they're trying to save their time, money, and resources. And the bitch is like, I am not about to be in your roster. I am the final destination, and that is that. And if you can't see that from the moment you meet me, you know, you might not know everything about me, but if you can't see my value that I am someone who deserves that kind of time and attention because that's what I give to myself and that is the attitude and lifestyle I give to myself. So if you can't reciprocate that and elevate it, you're not worth my time. The nice girl will go along with whatever because as long as it's easy for you and she'll go along with it because at least he's asking me on a date in the first place. What? The bitch is so confident in herself that she does think I'm not even gonna entertain anyone unless they are going to take me straight to girlfriend status. I am not out here to be your situationship, to be your experiment. This leads us onto step number two. The bad bitch is also never a backup option. Listen, if I find out a guy is dating another girl besides me, instant ick and listen i get it that's the thing now people date different people at the same time to figure out who is most suitable for them i totally get the logic behind it like totally and i understand why people do it no judgment at all but for me mm -mm. that's not how i roll the logic behind it is reasonable but i'm a bitch enough to say no i deserve better than that and either you put everything into me or you don't get me at all because if you see me and then you meet me and you interact with me and you still don't jump at the chance to pour all of your energy into me so that you can earn me i am instantly turned off some people might disagree but i have this stance because i have experienced it with every single relationship my past relationships were imperfect for sure but the common thing with all of them was they knew i was the prize and they chased me until they got me and this is the thing with a bitch as well it takes time for you to earn her respect and get her to like you at all because she's too concerned with herself and she's also gonna feel you out before she decides to trust you because as we said earlier she's so big on energy she needs to suss out what kind of impact you're gonna have on her and her life and whether you're aligned to her the people please a nice girl is so obsessed with the fact that you're giving her attention in the first place and the fact that she might just get a boyfriend out of it that she is all yours completely she flips it so then she's in her masculine energy and she's trying to get you to choose her rather than the other way around this leads us on to step number three, act like the prize and you will be treated like one. Because men are hunters at heart, okay? They have this innate desire to do all of the chasing. And I hate when I see girls doing the chasing because I'm like, you're literally shooting yourself in the foot. That's when men start taking advantage of you because you're too accessible, you're too available, and then you become a backup option. When you step back in your feminine and you allow them to do the chasing, all of a sudden they're doing everything they can to convince you that they are worthy for you to be with them. 
okay? And then you are the one sat back trying to make your decision. On top of this, my favorite benefit you get from acting like the prize is that you automatically filter out all of the low value men. And I'll give you a really good example of this. When I was in university and I used to be in rooms or clubs with a hundred other 20 somethings, my male friends used to say stuff like, you know, I really want to go talk to that girl because she's really cool and confident and beautiful. And I said, okay, why won't you? And they said, because she seems too difficult. She's too prestige. She wouldn't talk to me. And they would then proceed to go to another girl who they weren't even as attracted to, but they knew they had a better chance with her because that girl was giving them the eyes and giving them attention she was easy but they didn't want to put in the effort to buy the pretty confident girl that they wanted first a drink because they knew they had to put weeks of time into pursuing her to get her and they were too lazy to do that and it's so good that they were too scared to talk to her because she could have done a lot better when you act like you're the prize and you walk around and you know you're the shit and you know you're confident and you act like a bit of a bitch and you're not overly nice to everybody all of the men who are low effort will be too intimidated to approach you in the process. So yes, you might get less attention, but that's a good thing because the bit of attention you will get will be from the men that are actually deserving of you who desire to actually be boyfriends and not just get a girlfriend. They want to wine and dine you. They want to provide for you because when they look at you, they know those are the requirements of being with you. Step number four, the bitch knows men are easy and it's always their loss. Really think about it for a second. Every single time a woman has ever broken up with a man, whether it be your friend, your parent, your sister, someone in the media like a celebrity, has she not gone and either found someone better or just leveled up her life in the process? Women always end up doing better because women don't need men, men need women. And that is just a fact. And even if you don't believe that, I want you to take a step back and look at all of the men in your life and how desperate they can get to have a partner. No, 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 there's actually studies that show that men are more likely to be depressed if they don't have a romantic partner, whereas women are more likely to be successful when they're single. There are actual studies and statistics that prove that point. The next time a man is taking advantage of you, you are not gonna be worse off when you cut the cord. You will actually probably have the biggest glow up of your life. And I am a big believer in this. Once you process the breakup and are present with your emotions, at the end of the day, a breakup is the greatest catalyst you can have to have the best glow up of your life. I have been through, oh, I see the four or five breakups, I lose track. Every single time I've gone through a breakup, I get prettier, I get smarter, I get more successful and I make more money. Every single one. I love breakups. I also love relationships. I'm in a long-term relationship right now. It's not that I go out and I look for breakups, but I also see the opportunity in them because I'm never gonna be worse off because I am my own best friend. I am my own soulmate. I'm always gonna get what I need to have. And if I lose something, it just wasn't meant for me in the first place. And a bitch knows that. When a nice people pleaser girl is in a breakup, then automatically she equates that to, oh, I'm not worthy of love and I wasn't good enough. No. The nice girl sees breakups and a man not truly appreciating her as her loss because she's always competing for attention and she's always trying to gain this sense of being valued and worthy because she's not giving it to herself. Step five, the bitch knows not getting attention is a huge compliment. If you find yourself not getting attention from loads of men like your friend might be getting, it's because you only receive what you put out. When I was a teenager, I was getting so many DMs from random men trying to get my attention or date me. Nowadays, I get close to none. Even before I told everyone I was in a relationship, like for the last few years, I have not been getting as many DMs as I used to. You know why? Because my energy is completely shifted. When I was a teenager, I was looking for it. I needed that attention. And because I was putting that energy out into the universe, that's what I was getting back. But when you do that and you're desperate for that kind of attention, you attract the wrong type of people. You attract people who have equally low vibrations. So they're gonna put low effort into you. They're the type of people who DM everybody, who are desperate for attention, who aren't looking for something serious. I need you to stop getting offended when you're in the club and your friend is getting all of the attention and you're not. That does not mean you're not beautiful enough. It does not mean you are not not as worthy to date. It means that you are not as easy. You are intimidating for having standards and that is a good thing. That means when you do get attention, it will be from the person who is willing to fulfill all of those standards. And yes, those people are rare, but it's good that you're filtering out all of the losers who are gonna end up wasting your time anyway. And lastly, step number five, your non-negotiables. The bitch has a long list of them, 
The people pleaser has very fragile boundaries. First of all, non-negotiables links back to confidence. When you are so confident in your ability to get the life you want and also who you are and the value you bring to the table, you become so comfortable with saying, you either give me this or I'm done and I'm, I'm gone, that's it. When you aren't confident and you don't believe that everybody wants you and you feel like you have to fight for attention or try to earn somebody's love, you won't be able to have any non-negotiables because you'll be, you'll fear that you're scaring men off. Your non-negotiables are completely up to you depending on what kind of lifestyle you want to have. It could be that the man has to pay for every date. Some girls don't want that and that's completely okay. It could be we have to have a date night every single week or I need you to provide for me in this certain way. Some people is just, I just need you to be loyal and that's all they want. And that's fine. Whatever makes you happy, whatever suits your lifestyle. All that matters is that you have taken the time to evaluate what kind of lifestyle and treatment you want to receive and then you don't budge on that. The nice people pleaser girl hasn't even thought about that she's too concerned with am i pretty enough to gain that attention am i acting nice enough to gain that attention and you know she's gonna see these conversations that are being had online about 50 50 and who should pay the bill and she's gonna think you know well the least problematic option is 50 50 and i'm gonna scare less people away by doing that so I'm just gonna go with that option. The bad bitch knows she's gonna turn away so many people by having the controversial opinion, but when she communicates that clearly and she is fearless in saying, yes, this is what I expect and this is the requirement for you to date me, sure, a lot of people are gonna call her a bitch and a lot of people are gonna think she's stuck up, but at the end of the day, is she not gonna get what, exactly what she wants? When I had just met my current boyfriend and we were getting to know each other, I would just slip it into conversations just to see what his reaction was because truthfully, I wasn't scared if he ran away because if he did, then he just wasn't the right one for me. Because once you're not scared of scaring someone off, you can be so fearlessly confident about what you want. So I would say, yeah, I think 50-50 is BS and I think the man should pay the bill. That's just my beliefs. That's how I want to be treated. And to be fair, I give everything I want to myself that I love being single so much that a man has to go above and beyond to even get my attention in the first place. I literally used to say that to him guys, like on the phone when we were getting to know each other. But he saw that and he was like, cool. He was like, that, okay, that's what I have to do to get her. And that's what he did. And that's what he still does a whole year and a half later. Whereas the nice girl people pleaser, instead of putting her cards on the table and communicating them clearly, she follows his lead. Meaning the entire relationship is then built on his terms and whatever makes life easier for him. And this is why so many women get trapped in relationships or situationships even, where they've been with the guy for months and months and they haven't received one bouquet of flowers or they don't receive the cute text messages or gifts or extravagant dates and they have to scroll on social media every single day watching these other women gain this treatment and they wonder why they haven't. Because you didn't have a non-negotiable standard. The entire meaning of this is the consequence of him not fulfilling that standard of yours means he does not get to be with you. That's it guys, that brings us to the end of the video. I hope you learned something new if you did. Comment down below and let me know what your favorite fact was. I wanna know how your mindset is gonna be changing right now. I want us all to become bad bitches together. Um, if you would like to have some discussions on this, remember I have my Discord linked below in the description. We have so many threads on the Discord where you can talk about what you're going through. You can talk about your dating, your confidence, your journaling, all of that good stuff. I wish you the best on your journeys. Remember, we are leveling up. We are becoming more demanding. That is how we get exactly what we want. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Mwah.